Hi, I'm Mariam, and this is the last part of our 3D sound tutorial series. In the previous video, we talked about history of spatialization and covered the basic theory of ambisonics. In this one, we're going to set up a workflow in Reaper and see how we specialize sound using ambisonics technique. So let's get started. For the demonstration, I'm going to use Reaper software. If you're new to Reaper, there is a tutorial video made by a composer, Jessica Slichter, on the same Nuts and Bolts channel, and I'm going to leave a link for you in the description. For spatialization, I will use the IEM plugins, which is a free and open source set of Ambisonics plugins up to 7th order. There are several other free plugins on the market, such as Ambisonics Toolkit, Sparta, or Ambix plugins from Matthias Kronlachner. If you're a Max user, you should definitely check out IRCAM's SPAT library. I will leave a link in the description for SPAT tutorials made by a composer, Balin Lutzko, giving you a quick introduction to the library. I'm going to start by importing one A format and two stereo files. Reaper recognizes the number of channels in the imported audio file and assigns the number of track channels accordingly. So we have four channels for A format file and two for each stereo. Next, I will add an additional track for a decoder, because I prefer having it on a separate track in my projects. Let's start with an A-format file. As you remember from the previous tutorial, A-format is usually converted to B-format to compensate for the distance between the microphone capsules. Soundfield microphones come with dedicated A to B converter plugins. Here I have Soundfill SPS200 microphone recording and the converter plugin surround zone that comes with the mic. Here we can choose input and output formats. My current recording is an A-format sound file, so I will select A-format here. In the output format, you can see that we have several options, but at the moment I need a B-format, so I select that and we get four channels in FUMA order W, X, Y, Z. As we remember, FUMA is an older, rarely used standard, so if we want to decode this B format file with IEM plugins, we will have to convert it to ACN first, because IEM uses the ACN channel order. In this case, I will need a converter from MBIX plugins called MBIX Converter. O1 stands for first order. So here in input format, I will select first malum, same as FUMA in both channel sequence and normalization and convert it to ACNS and 3D. Remember that the terminology varies from software to software, so the channel sequence here refers to the channel order. Now our file is a B format encoded file, which is ready to be decoded. Now let's set up a decoder. First, I'm going to show you a decoder I usually use with regular, uniformly arranged speaker setups. It is the Allrod decoder from the same IEM plugins. On the left side of the window, you see the 3D visualization of the default speaker setup, where the blue dots represent speakers. Below that, you have a loudness map showing you where most of the energy is located in the sphere. On the right side, you see the speaker layout. For a decoder to work, it should always know where our speakers are located in the physical space. If you are the one setting up the speakers, you should do the measurements of azimuth and elevation angles and distance from the center of the room. Otherwise, the studios and concert spaces provide you with the speaker coordinates. In SPAD, you can find speaker setups from several big studios such as Ircom Studios, The Cube of Virginia Tech, ZKM of Kubus or Nota Multichannel Studio where I'm sitting right now. It is possible to export these coordinates and use them in your project. If the coordinates are saved as JSON file format, you can import them in the plugin directly. Otherwise, you should enter the coordinates one by one. Here we see the column for imaginary speakers. So what is this for? Ambisonics decoders ideally want to work with the speaker setups that cover the entire Ambisonics sphere. Most often, you work with hemispherical speaker layouts. That can create problems and uneven energy distribution, so placing an imaginary speaker below the listening position makes the decoder more stable and even. Here on the right side, we have noise buttons. It sends a short noise signal to corresponding channels to verify whether your routing is correct. Before you hit the Calculate Decoder button, you should enter the desired ambisonics order and choose one of the weights. Without too much technical detail, you almost always want to use max RE. 
Once your decoder is set, you can either save it as a preset or export it as a JSON file, which you can import back later. At the top of the plugin, you can see the overview of the current state. The decoder receives an ambisonic file, uses SN3D normalization, third order ambisonics, and sends out 24 decoded audio channels. Besides azimuth and elevation coordinates, we need to know the loudspeaker's distance from the listening position. With the distance compensator, you can provide the distance from the listening position for each loudspeaker and the plugin will calculate the necessary delays and gains to compensate for distance differences. This plugin should be placed at the end of your signal chain. Now I'm going to disable both of the plugins and insert another decoder for headphone listening, a binaural decoder. You can keep both decoder plugins on the track and use Allrad when working at the studio with physical speakers and Binaural when you're out of the studio to work with headphones. To understand how the Binaural audio works, we can go back to our first tutorial for a second. Do you remember we talked about how we perceive sound in the real world? We said that our head, pina and torso filter the sound arriving at our ears, and these filters help us understand the direction of the sound source. All these filters can be condensed into what is called head-related transfer function or HRTF. So the difference between a conventional stereo and binaural is that in stereo this filtering is missing. Now how do we create a binaural audio? One way to do it is to record the audio in this format directly and there are several microphones designed for this purpose. The dummy head is designed to replicate an average sized human head. It is equipped with pina and ear canals in which small microphones are placed. The one we are looking at is Neumann KU100 model. Another type of microphone is the one without a head part in the middle such as the 3D or free space. More affordable and compact ones are in-ear headphones combined with binaural microphones such as Sennheiser Ambio or the Roland CS10EM. Another way to create binaural audio is to decode the ambisonics file in binaural, which we will demonstrate shortly. What happens here is that the decoder filters the virtual sound source signals with head-related transfer functions and attempts to create a fully immersive listening experience in headphones. For binaural listening, left and right isolation of ears is required using headphones. Listening to it on speakers results in crosstalk and loss of directionality. One of the reasons why binaural might not sound convincing is that the 3D sound scene does not change when you turn your head around. To make it sound more natural, head trackers are often being used. Head tracking data can be used to counter-rotate the scene to the rotation of the head so that a stationary sound source appears to remain at the same spot even if you turn your head. You can either buy a head tracker or build it yourself. This one is built by a friend of mine. The green one is the Teensy microcontroller and the blue one is a sensor board that tracks the rotation of the device and since it's attached to a headphone it becomes a head tracker. In the description, you will find a link where composer and programmer Mass Shelgor explains how it can be used with Reaper and IAM plugins. Now let's go back to our binaural decoder. Here we see that we receive an ambisonic signal as an input and output a two-channel signal for headphone listening. The only control we have here is headphone equalization. You can see that there are quite a few market leader headphones in the drop-down menu. If you are using one of them, try it out and see if it works well for you. IAM also has an adaptive binaural decoder that lets you import HRTF in SOFA format. There is a website you can download SOFA files from artificial head measurements and I will leave a link to that as well in the description. Let's listen to our B format file. We uncheck the master send because we need to decode it first before we listen. So instead we will send it to the decoder track. Now we can encode and decode our stereo files. First I will insert a stereo encoder. Here we see the controls for azimuth, elevation, width and row. Azimuth and elevation control the horizontal and vertical movements of a sound source. This dial controls the width between left and right channels and this one here rolls them. Roll makes sense to be used when the width is set to more than zero. And here is the multi-encoder which looks similar but this can handle up to 64 channels. This means that instead of adding separate encoders to each track, 
you can create an ambisonics bus, insert multi-encoder on it and send your stereo and mono tracks to it for encoding. Based on the ambisonics order, you should change tracks channel number. For example, now I'm working in the first order, which is 4 channels after encoding, so I go back and change it from 2 to 4. And here I make sure that all 4 encoded channels are sent to the decoder. Here I will leave only two sources to control as my file is stereo with two channels. The most effective way to automate parameters is to draw the trajectories while listening to the sound. You change automation mode from read to write, start playback and move the parameter you want to automate. Let's demonstrate that with both encoders. Now let's see our rendering options. If you're rendering in binaural format, you can render from master track, which will give you a two-channel file. But if you're rendering for playback with physical speakers, you will render an encoded file that should be decoded by a decoder designed for the given speaker layout. In this case, you need to select the decoder track with disabled FX. The decoder track is the one that receives all the encoded files and if the decoder plugin is disabled, we get only encoded file from this track. So we're finished for now. Uh, I hope these videos helped you to understand at least a little bit of how 3D sound works. And like I said in the previous tutorials, if you're interested in learning more about it, there is a lot of free resources on the internet. 
I'm going to leave my email address in the description of this video just for you to get in touch with me if you have any questions. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers.